when you understand you're at battle, like if you're not your favorite quote, we might as well just start off with it from John Eldridge. You want to you want to give it to the people too. Until you see your life in the context of war, you'll misinterpret ninety percent of what happens to you. Hundred percent. And if you're if you don't realize you're at war, compromise is okay, right? Because I'm not fighting that person anyway, so I don't really need to be. It's like ah, who cares? That's the thought process. Yeah, right? and, the, and the subtext to that, but the war is not about you. That's right. You are in a war, but the war is not against you. Correct. The battle is in your heart and it's in your mind. You're you're at war in your heart, which is your desire center. Mm. Just because I give my life to Christ and I've been transformed doesn't mean I'm never tempted again. Doesn't mean I have to still get get rid of these things in my life and burn off a sinful nature, right? Just because I've had good thoughts doesn't mean I'll have never have negative thoughts. Yeah. I have to continue to war at those things. It's like Zig said about motivation. It's like a shower. You need to do it every day. Yeah. It's like being in shape. It's not, well, I bench pressed 415 pounds one time, so I'm good for the rest of my life. Yeah, set. No, I've got to continue to fight. I've got to continue to be at war in these things, in the areas that you are most at war, right? There's a there's a war in your flesh. I don't mean just flesh in the way the Bible talks about it. I mean, there's war in your flesh just to stay healthy, right? You have to fight in that area. You say, if the enemy can't destroy you, he'll distract you. Yeah. And I love that quote so much because it's there's so much in that. We're going to get into distraction. But but that's the, we're all, I feel like people go like, oh, Satan's out to get me. I'm going to be like, there's going to be these demons and all these people are going to come to my house. Like, And you think like, that's like, no, no, no. We don't need to do that. And that's, Wouldn't it be great if you were just comfortable to death? This is an understanding of the battlefield that I like to give to me. Yes. Right. Um, you know, if you have like your children's church uh, thought process right. of, of God and Satan, yeah, very right? Good. You think that there's a scoreboard between God and Satan. And it's like, who's going to get more souls? Right. And this also comes from, and I won't spend time addressing all this, but this also comes from really a lot of the philosophy of the church in the last 50 years, which was basically just focused mm -hmm. on winning souls. Yeah. And so if you had this understanding of the church, you'd think like, well, you know, there's a scoreboard between God and Satan and God saying, you know, if he gets more souls, he wins. And if yeah. Satan gets more souls, he wins. And so you would think that if that's the case, that that's what Satan cares so much about. I really don't think that Satan cares that much if a man gives his life to Christ. Hmm. I think he cares what he does with that man. Either like Satan sees us differently than we see ourselves. Satan looks at each man and says, that's, that's a son of God, mm. right? And I, I, the way I like to see that or the way that I understand that Satan sees God is imagine if you just so deeply hated somebody, yeah, right? And, and I hope if you're listening to this, you don't feel that way or don't have that from experience, but just imagine that you deeply, deeply hated someone and there's nothing that you could do to hurt them, like physically. You can't assault them. You can't go right. into their house. Right, and this is Satan and God. He can't hurt God, mm -hmm. but he thinks, "Well, man, what could I do that would hurt God? What if I could turn his sons against him? What yeah. if I could make his sons deny him? What if I could make his?" And this is the, the, think about in Job. This is Satan before the throne, right? Talking about yeah. like Job is uh, chronologically. Job is one of the earliest characters in the Bible, and Satan standing before the throne, saying, "You, you see, your son Job, he only loves mm -hmm. you." Because of how yeah. easy his life is. Look how, look how much he's had. He doesn't really love you. This is Satan's view of God. And so he's attacking Job in a way, or attacking God in a way, saying, if you'll let me hurt Job, I bet I could turn your sons against you. This is Satan's view of God. Yeah. Right? He says, I can't hurt God, but I could hurt him by turning his sons against him. And so if you have that understanding, that's where it's like, man, say, Satan can't destroy me. Mm -hmm. Right? I've given my life to Christ. I'm serving Christ. Satan can't destroy me. But if he could make me live in a way that doesn't glorify God, yeah. if he could get me to turn my back or turn my heart against God, to Satan, that's a win. Yeah. Because Satan's not trying, it's not a soul's battle. Satan's just trying to dishonor God. Yeah. And I mean, and here in the in here in the US, I mean, there's so much comfort everywhere. Wouldn't it just be such a great thing to just keep pumping that that drug and just until the people just don't even recognize it anymore? And in the in the same way, like I just kind of gave a small picture of what the battle what the battlefield is similar to what the screw tapes letters screw tape letters book does when you have an understanding of the battlefield you see it differently yeah big time right if you just like appeared on the battlefield you was like man what's going on there's chaos everywhere but if you know the real war that's happening you hit so you have a greater ability to understand what the enemy's doing why they're doing what they're doing how to outmaneuver them how to overcome mm -hmm. them yes right so that's why it's so important that you understand the battlefield that you're on so just to say the battlefields in the heart and mind, you need to assess yourself for where you're susceptible. You need to know the common tactics of comfort, distraction, negativity, selfishness, slash being on your isolation. So, gee, 
you say this, and you said the biggest thing you want people to take away from this episode is... The biggest thing that I want people to understand, because we're talking about training for war, if you took away one takeaway from this episode, it's that you would always train. Every warrior throughout, every warrior culture throughout history, the ones that lasted, they had this thought process of, we always train for war. Whether we're in a peacetime, whether we're at war, whether we just finish war and we're headed towards peace, whether we're in peace, we think war's on the horizon, we're in war, you're always training. Hmm. When we were going through like COVID and riots and all of that stuff and you know people are like oh man like there was a there was a short season where people were like we're this is it this yeah. is the apocalypse this is like right. the, this is like the pre-apocalypse we're about to go into the apocalypse people like i had people texting me like man we got to start getting ready yeah like <laughs> yeah like it, it's coming and to the people who text me that that i was close with um i gave a little bit of correction in their thought process uh to the other people who would text me that i wasn't close with i didn't uh, respond because what I wanted to say was right. This is my like, I, if, if if apocalypse does come and you're not ready, you're not on my team. Right, right. Uh, warriors are always ready for the battle. They don't wait for the battle to show up to start preparing. 